The vibe is decidedly different heading into this week's game following a big Monday night win against Philadelphia. Hello 12s, I'm Jen Mueller with a preview of Sunday's game between the Tennessee Titans and an energized Seahawks team. There ain't nothing like the rewards of, you know, of the victory and, and uh, it was reinforcing. And it was reinforcing because we finished so well. And that was a big win for us, uh, big, big time game, Monday Night Football against a really good team. You know, I thought Drew played really well throughout the game and then, you know, for him to close it out the way he did, for all the guys to make the plays the way they did, man, I was, uh, I was just so happy, man, I couldn't, you know, it was, one of those nights where you'll remember for the rest of your life, man, just seeing him in that moment. By now, you've seen the highlights. 92 yards in a minute 52, capped by a spectacular touchdown catch from Jackson Smith in Jigba. And then the game-winning interception from Julian Love. It all means the Seahawks are still squarely in the playoff conversation. It boosts our confidence, man, because uh, for a team like us who was searching for a win, uh, just to get it um, against a team that good um, in the atmosphere that we did um, in front of our, our home team, in front of our home crowd, and then, you know, with Drew at quarterback. So now uh, we get to go back um, and basically start over from scratch. DK Metcalf accounted for 58 yards on the Seahawks' final drive, but it was Ken Walker's 86 yards, his highest rushing total since week seven against Arizona, that helped create the balance needed to set up the final drive. When you have a runner or a player that kind of surprises you with the, the great things that they do, it's you're always in anticipation. Maybe he's going to go here, maybe he's going to go there. And when you play a guy like that, you, you defend accordingly. You know, you're concerned every time there's space. You're worried that something could happen. And sometimes when he's in trouble, he gets out of trouble and makes things happen. This week, the Hawks face a Titans defense that allows just 3.9 yards per carry, seventh best in the NFL. Tennessee's D is especially dominant in the red zone. The Titans have allowed just 19 touchdowns on 51 opponent possessions inside the 20. That makes them the best red zone defense in the league. Tough group and they play really physical with the line of scrimmage. When they have all their guys there, they're as good as anybody we play. They, they're aggressive. Um, they're going to make you have to beat them, and they don't let you run the football. You know the mindset of their coach and Mike Vrabel, um, defensive-minded coach, tough guy, so they're going to follow suit. And so they got guys all across the board that can make plays, a bunch of different packages. They mix the looks, multiple looks, multiple coverages, and, um, you know, they really play hard. The Titans haven't fared as well in creating turnovers or pressures. They've managed just 12 takeaways, second fewest in the league. And opposing QBs have a 96.7 passer rating against. Speaking of passers, Geno Smith returned to practice as a full participant this week, but there is a question as to who will be under center for the Titans. Will Levis suffered an ankle injury Sunday, and with his status uncertain, the possibility of Ryan Tannehill getting the start means the Seahawks will have to prepare for two different quarterbacks. Will Levis has, has come on. He's really, he's really shown a lot of bright spots. He's very aggressive, very strong thrower. He's quick, he's fast, um, he's tough. Um, he looks, he's handling the system, you know, the system and all that. Um, so I can see why they're fired up about, you know, growing with him and seeing him develop. Um, Ryan Tannehill has been a good football player for a long time. Like he's an accomplished, established, experienced quarterback that can run this offense, and, and uh, you know, so we we'll, we'll, we got to get ready for all that. The Titans' offensive line, however, has had its struggles, with two rookies starting on the left side and down to their third starter at right tackle. They allowed seven sacks on Sunday and a total of 50 this season one more than they allowed in all of 2022. Meanwhile, running back Derrick Henry punished the Seahawks in the previous meetings between these teams back in 2021 for a total of 182 yards and three touchdowns. His most recent stat line was a far cry from that. Just nine yards on 16 attempts Sunday in Houston. He has a game or two like that a year and he still continues to put up crazy numbers. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's Derrick Henry. He's one of the best to do it. He continues to be tough to tackle. He continues to go out there and make his mark and you know he's the identity of that team. It is an early start for the Seahawks on Sunday and the fourth time this year they have kicked off at 10 a.m. You can watch that game on Cairo 7 and tune in to the Seahawks radio network.